In this two-minute diabetes drill, I'll review several important tips about insulin pump infusion sets and tubing. Remember, like any other machine or device, user error is the difference between effective and ineffective insulin pump use. Insulin pump infusion tubing is composed of a flexible see-through polymer. When properly filled and primed with fast-acting insulin, the tubing should contain a solid, uninterrupted column of insulin along its entire length. Make sure to visually inspect the tubing for any air bubbles or insulin gaps with every infusion site change. Even a short air bubble can result in high sugars and ketones. If you see a blemish or scar in the tubing that looks like a bubble, it shouldn't move if you disconnect and deliver a short prime. But if it moves, it's an air bubble and it should be properly purged out. When connected to the pump's insulin reservoir and an infusion set, this apparatus should be a closed system. As a result, you should not be able to smell insulin. If you do, there could be a leak or crack somewhere in the equipment. In this case, change out the entire infusion tubing, site, and reservoir. The joints where the tubing connects to the plastic reservoir or the infusion set connector on rare occasions can become loose and leak insulin. I've heard of patients reporting knots in the tubing as a reason for poor insulin delivery, but I've seen heavily knotted tubing sets still deliver insulin without any occlusion. Remember to never prime the pump while connected to the tubing. I still hear of people who make this critical error. Only prime a pump when the tubing is completely disconnected from the body. Finally, if you temporarily disconnect from the pump to shower or exercise, always do it at the infusion site, never from the reservoir.